Part 1. What is the shadow? Everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. At all counts, it forms an unconscious snag thwarting our most well-meant intentions. C. G. Jung Yet, there is a mis mystery here, and it is not one that I understand. Without this thing of otherness, of even the vicious, without the terrible energies of the underside of health, sanity, sense, then nothing works, or can work. I tell you that goodness, what we in our ordinary daylight selves call goodness, the ordinary, uh, the decent, these are nothing without the hidden powers that pour forth continually from their shadow sides. Doris Lessing Man's shadow, I thought, is his vanity. Frederick Nietzsche This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. William Shakespeare <clears throat> Introduction Everything with substance casts a shadow. The ego stands to the shadow as light to shade. This is the quality that makes us human. Much as we would like to deny it, we are imperfect, and perhaps it is in what we don't accept about ourselves, our aggression and shame, our guilt and pain, that we discover our humanity. The shadow goes by many familiar names, the, the disowned self, the lower self, the dark twin or brother in Bible and myth, <clears throat> the double, repressed self, alter ego, ID. When we come face to face with our darker side, we use metaphors to describe these shadow encounters, meeting our demons, wrestling with a devil, Descent to the underworld, dark night of the soul, midlife crisis. We all have a shadow, or does our shadow have us? Carl Jung turned this question into a riddle when he asked, How do you find a lion that has swallowed you? Because the shadow is, by definition, unconscious. It is not always possible to know whether or not we are under the sway of some compelling part of our shadow's contents. Jung said that intuitively each of us understands that what is meant by the terms shadow, inferior personality or alter ego. And if he, ha if, if he has forgotten, he joked about the average man. His memory can easily be refreshed by a Sunday sermon, his wife, or the tax collector. collector. In order to be capable of meeting the shadow in our daily lives, admitting to it, and thus breaking its often compulsive hold on us, we need, first of all, a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon. The shadow concept flows out of discoveries made by Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Paying due respect to his predecessor, Jung acknowledged Freud's breakthrough work as the most detailed and profound analysis of the split between the light and dark sides of the human psyche. According to Jung's former student and colleague Lilian Frame Ron, as early as 1912, while still under the influence of Freud's theories, Jung used the term shadow side of the psyche to characterize not recognized desires and repressed portions of the personality. In 1917, in his essay on the psychology of the unconscious, Jung speaks of the personal shadow as the other in us, the unconscious personality of the same sex, the reprehensible inferior the other that embarrasses or shames us. By shadow, I mean the negative side of the personality, the sum of all those unpleasant qualities we like to hide, 
together with the insufficiently developed functions and the content of the personal unconscious. The shadow is negative only from the point of view of consciousness. It is not, as Freud insisted, totally immoral and incomparable with our conscious personalities. Rather, it potentially contains values of the highest morality. This is particularly true, says Ray Frey Rong, when there is a side hidden in the shadow personality, which society values as positive, yet which is regarded by the individual as inferior. The shadow most closely approaches what Freud understood as the repressed, but in contrast to Freud's view, Jung's shadow is an inferior personality that has its own contents, such as autonomous thought, thought, ideas, images, and value judgments that are similar to the superior conscious personality. By 1945, Jung was referring Jung was referring to the shadow as simply the thing a person has no wish to be. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, he said, but by making the darkness conscious. The latter procedure, however, is disagreeable and therefore not popular. Today, Shadow refers to the part of the unconscious psyche that is neater, nearest to consciousness, even though it is not completely accepted by it, because it is contrary to our chosen conscious attitude. The shadow personality is denied expression in life and coalesces into a relatively separate splinter personality in the unconscious, where it is isolated from exposure and discovery. This compensates for the one-sided identification we make with what is acceptable to our conscious minds. For Jung and his followers, psychotherapy offers a ritual for renewal in which the shadow personality can be brought to awareness and assimilated, thus reducing its inhibiting or destructive potentials and releasing trapped positive life energy. Jung continued, Jung continued to be concerned with the, related, with the related problems of personal destructiveness and collective evil throughout a long and distinguished career. His investigations showed that dealing with shadow and evil is ultimately an individual secret, equal to that of experiencing God, and so powerful an experience that it can transform the whole person. Jung sought answers to the perplexing questions that trouble each of us, says Jungian scholar Andrew Samuels, and his life's work provides a convincing explanation not only of personal antipathies, but also the cruel prejudices and persecutions of our time. Jung saw his own destiny as that of an explorer, a man who creates new ways of conceptualizing age-old problems, psychological problems, as well as philosophical, spiritual, and religious ones. He said that he wanted to address those people who seek meaning in their lives, but for whom the traditional carriers of faith and religion no longer work. In the 1937 publication, Psychology and Religion, Jung said, Probably all that is left us today is a psychological approach. That is why I take these thought forms that have become historically fixed, try to melt them down again and pour them into molds of immediate experience. Robert A. Johnson, a well-known author and lecturer whose writing is in the third generation of Jungian ideas, says that Jung's lasting contribution was the development of a magnificent vision of the human capacity for consciousness. He posited a model of the unconscious so momentous that the Western world has still not fully caught up with its implications. 
perhaps Jung's greatest accomplishment was to reveal the unconscious to be the creative source of all that we eventually become as individuals. In fact, our conscious minds and personalities develop and mature from the raw material of the unconscious in interactive play with life experiences. Along with self, the psychological center of the human being, and anima and animus, the internalized ideal images of the opposite sex, the soul image in each person, Junk classified the shadow as one of the major archetypes in the unconscious, like psychological fingerprints, which contain performed characteristics, personal qualities and traits shared with all other human beings. They are living psychic forces within the human psyche. According to the critical dictionary of Jungian analysis, gods are metaphors of archetypal behaviors and myths are archetypal enactments. The course of Jungian analysis involves a growing awareness of this archetypal dimension of a person's life. To introduce and define the personal shadow in part one, we have chosen several outstanding examples from Jungian writers because it is in these formulations that the concept has become well known and useful as a tool for personal growth and therapeutic healing. The writers in this section address the essential issues that make it possible for us to perceive the shadow in everyday living. In latter sections of this book, the concept is broadened from its personal to its collective manifestations in prejudice, war, and evil in essays chosen from a wide range of ideas. In opening this section, Poet Robert Bly uses a personal voice to narrate the story of the shadow in an excerpt from A Little Book on the Human Shadow. The disowned self, says Bly, becomes a holding buffer as we grow up, a long bag we drag behind us, that contains our unacceptable parts. Bly also links our personal bags to other kinds, our collective shadows. Next, Jungian training analyst Edward C. Whitmond shows us the therapist's view of the shadow as it appears in patients, dreams, and life experiences. This excerpt from The Symbolic Quest gives a sound definition for to our theme. What the Shadow Knows, Chapter 3 is a 1989 conversation between San Diego-based analyst and Episcopal minister John A. Sanford and interviewer D. Patrick Miller, which originally appeared in the magazine The Sun. Throughout his career, Sanford has taken on the difficult questions of human evil. His psychological explanation of the famous Robert Louis Stevenson story, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, appears as chapter 5 in this section. The Shadow in History and Literature is an excerpt from Archetypes, a natural history of the self by British psychologist Anthony Stevens. Sandwiched between the two Sanford pieces, this article describes the shadow as it appears in works of the imagination. Chapter 6, The Realization of the Shadow in Dreams, is an essay by eminent psychoanalyst and dream scholar Marie-Louis von Franz, one of Jung's closest collaborators. It comes from Man and His Symbols, a popular book that Dr. Von Franz helped to write and edit in concept with Jung and three other loyal disciples in the early 1960s. This source book was C. G. Jung's last living work, a compilation of ideas and images addressed to the broad reading public. We end this section on a constructive note with therapist William A. Miller's piece, Finding the Shadow in Daily Life, from his book, 
Your Golden Shadow, Miller guides us into shadow phenomena by examining projections, slips of the tongue, and humor, and by showing how to discover the shadow in the ordinary events of life. Jung once remarked in a moment of exasperation about literal-minded pupils quoting his concepts out of context that the shadow is simply the whole unconscious. Though he was not serious, his observation would be true only if a person were completely unaware of the unconscious in everyday life. Once we begin to develop awareness of parts of the unconscious personality, then the shadow takes on an identifiable personal form, which initiates the process of shadow work. This procedure ultimately yields a profound awareness of who we are. According to analyst Eric Newman, the self lies hidden in the shadow. He is the keeper of the gate, the guardian of the threshold. The way to the self lies through him. Behind the dark aspects that he represents, there stands the aspect of wholeness, and only by making friends with a shadow do we gain the friendship of the self.